Hi everybody, John Meadows here, and we have another special guest today for an exercise index video. Now, if you didn't know, this is Dr. Jordan Shallow, the muscle doc. And we just did a back workout and, you know, you guys know I have kind of a fragile lower back. And Jordan had, had me do a dumbbell row that I really liked. So I wanted to share that with you all today because I know some of you have maybe a little bit of a, we'll call it a fragile lower back. And I got to be really careful with my rows, but we just did these. We did them pretty heavy and literally my lower back feels very good. I, had, I didn't even feel it actually. And usually it's kind of burning. It feel, I can tell it's going to be sore next day. So I really wanted Jordan to show you all the technique that we used on the dumbbell row today because it's a little different than a normal technique that you see. So Jordan, if you could just walk my crew here through um, how we did these. Yeah, so real basic, what we're doing is we're not trying to focus on muscles, we're trying to integrate motion, right? So a, a big part of how this is gonna work effectively is in the setup. So say I'm gonna use my, my right shoulder to start. What I wanna do is I wanna line myself up almost in like a sumo deadlift stance. So my hips are open, toes pointing forward perpendicular to the bench and the 45 degree angle kind of set up sumo stance obliquely to the bench. Now, right now my spine's facing this way. And what I'm going to do is open my hips up, keep my knees over my toes, and now I'm going to start with my sternum facing the middle of the chair, right? So this is going to kind of be my default starting position for both sides. As I reach down and grab the dumbbell, as I come down to the ground, I want to make sure that this back hip stays open, right? So we're not going to let that knee cave in. Hip stays open, especially as that dumbbell reaches across the center of the body. The idea is we're going to create a lot of rotation through that spine that we're going to use our lats, our obliques, our QL. We're going to use a, everything that stabilizes the rotation through our back to get to fire and integrate properly. So we got opposite hip forward and flex. We're using opposite shoulder, right? So it's just like, kind of like we're walking. Think of like gait cycle. That's how we examine function. So that's how we're going to load this movement. So again, to recap, kind of sumo stance, 45 degree away from the chair. We're going to shift the sternum. So it's centered, hand centered to the middle of the chair, sternum centered to the hand. We're going to reach down, grab the dumbbell. Big emphasis on this back hip, keeping that knee open. We're going to grab the dumbbell. We're going to allow it to cross the center of our body. We're going to pull from the elbow. And as we reach, we're going to drive that hip back, keeping that knee open, create as much space between the armpit and the hip as we can. And we're going to row. So think of putting that elbow in the opposite side back pocket. So I'm aiming for that left glute. So how many, like when you do these, Jordan, what are the sets and reps typically like on these? So these are usually stick four, four sets and I try and keep them heavy. So depending on what you have access to for your dumbbells, like we went a little heavier when we trained, um, a little more reps when we trained, just because the dumbbells weren't heavy as what I'm used to. So we're trying to hit a little bit more volume, but when training movements, we're not worried about isolation. We're not worried about necessarily hypertrophy per se. We're worried about integration, we're worried about function. So the most we can load while all those parameters are being appeased. So making sure that knee stays out, that's going to be the first thing that goes. So if you're loading heavy through like a six to eight rep range and you notice that knee caves in, cut the weight, right? Because that's going to be what goes first. That our hip is doing what our, our core should be doing, right? So that's kind of a good litmus test for me is I'll load this as heavy as I can between the six to eight rep range a lot of the year. And then I keep loading until that knee starts to cave in. That means my hip is trying to take over for what my spine can't do or what my muscles, my core should be doing. The kind of general rule of thumb. The other thing that I was thinking was this will be great for athletes. Yeah. I feel like this will be a great exercise for, you know, a football player, really any sprinters even. Yeah. It feels like anyone who goes through exaggerated gait cycle movements, running, sprinting, anything with cutting involved, literally any sport you can think of. Yeah. It's a great exercise to stabilize the pelvis, stabilize the spine, stabilize the hips and do it under load. Like, I mean, we were doing this with 100 plus pounds, right? So you don't even realize it's a corrective exercise and we can just put it into your program. So it's not frilly, there's no bands, there's none of this rehab stuff. It's, it's still training. Yeah. It's just with a little bit more focus and intent. Cool. All right, thank you. That was an awesome exercise. You guys, make sure you give this a try and execute it exactly the way Jordan said and you'll love it. If you like that video, I know you're gonna love my app available on the Google Play Store for Android, iPhones, 
in the Apple Store. There's so much information on here, it's amazing. Training, workouts, hundreds of workouts, nutrition methodology questions, chemical enhancement, supplementation, client prep, and a Q&A button. Check it out.